Hello. We're back here in my studio kitchen, which I've set up for the weekend because it's so smoky outside. Um, it's also kind of nice to experience uh, working in a, a spontaneously confined area. There's the piece that we're going to be working on today. Um, you saw me build the that piece uh, from a, a circular disc from a disc of about 12 inches and <clears throat> to build it to a dome and put the foot on. We've already seen that. And now what we're going to do is flip it over and learn how to prepare. Uh, we have to clean up the inside from the closing of the piece uh, when we built the dome. And then we have to prepare the edge to start accepting coils as we build up now the, the last half. So we'll build up the body of the pot, can finish the sphere, and then we'll, we'll decide on a neck and a, um, what, what kind of opening neck scale and then uh, lip uh, of the finished pot. So that's where we're going. Um, you may, some of you may have noticed that the color of the clay has changed. I did the demonstration in a um, red clay and now the clay is a kind of off white. And this is the Dawn 20 clay. And the reason that I have a change in clay is because the video that I did, the demonstration that I did for some reason the Zoom video wasn't taking, it wasn't actually recording. And so um, when I was all done, I lost that video. So I have to do it again. So, you know, this is a learning curve here. Um, eventually we will, with persistence and patience, we will find success. So now we have a situation here where we're going to turn this piece over here. And normally I would have a, a board ready for it. Um, I'll, I'll use this this one here in a minute. So in order to turn this over, um, it's very important that this condition be very, um, it has to be leather hard enough to hold the weight. You don't want it on this little foot here. If this weren't stiff enough, it would collapse. So this piece I made yesterday and left out uh, uncovered overnight in, in this kitchen studio. And because there's some air blowing through the house, it dried up pretty well. It's a little soft towards the top here, so I'll have to watch to make sure it doesn't sag or, or the, the form doesn't misshapen, but uh, doesn't get misshapen. But for now, I think it's okay. If I don't jiggle it too much, it should be all right. You'll notice that I kept it, even though I had it open overnight, I had a little bit of um, plastic around the lip, around the edge of it, just to keep this edge. And then this is damp cloth here, damp um, terry cloth. And that keeps the, the clay wet right where I have to join it to additional, um, where I have to get the clay now. Um, I have to start coiling again, and I need that to be wet. I need this to be leather hard, but this has to be damp enough to accept more clay. So now I have to get the, this part off, and sometimes they'll come right up, usually if they're made out of wood, but this is plastic. So I'm going to start by... Um, just using my feddling knife here. This is a feddling knife. Should be in the loaner kits. And we'll just bring that around. And this is in order to get a start on pulling this off here. Getting this off of the, there it goes, comes right off. And then you can see we have like a nice little drum here. Now this whole section of clay we don't need. Um, this was just uh, serving to keep these edges from expanding outward. Um, that was the whole purpose of this little slab of clay that we put on the board. Now I can take this board uh, just to make sure that I have some way to continue to transport my piece. I'll lift this up gently and put the board right underneath. And now we have a place. So what I want to do now, first thing is to remove this um, extra clay that we no longer need to reveal the pot. So I'm just going to take my feddling knife and just cut around. And I'm not cutting all the way to the edge because I can't really see where that is. So I'll do an initial cut, which will get me to this point. And this clay is actually wet enough. I should be able to use it uh, to make more coils. So I'm going to just uh, put this in a little bit of plastic. Just to keep it from getting dry. Okay. 
and we'll see we'll see if we use that in a little bit now we just want to bring this edge here you can see it's kind of still got an overhang here and I want to clear that up so I'm going to just cut as close as I can to get an even edge it's pretty good um, there's still a little bit more to go over here and I can see that it is a little soft still so we're gonna have to go carefully here um, I'll have to keep an eye on it to make sure I don't start to lose um, some of the form so because it is you can it's a little wobbly here um, so the other thing I want to show you is the inside. There's the inside of it. And you can see, as I said in the first demo, it's going to look a little bit like a belly button, kind of like an innie there. And I need to, um, I need to close that up. And the first thing I'll do is it'll be a little stiff, but it's not too bad. I'm just going to start wiping it with my hand to start with. And that's just going to I'll be able to, I want to cover over all the little um, chasms and crevices and make sure I don't trap air. So I'm going to just compress that clay in. And then I'll keep doing that. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around with a rib and clean up that whole inside. And that looks like this. I get my, my steel rib. Let me find a, a good steel rib here. Where did my toolbox go? This makes some exciting video right here. Right. Well, I have uh, one of these, which is, uh, I, it's what happens when you, I cut the steel rib in half, and that makes some nice access for details. And I'm just going to start scraping the inside to get rid of that um, kind of raised and rough belly button area at the bottom to make sure we have a nice, open form. Now, how clean this needs to be, um, I like to really clean up the insides of my pot. If I were going to do a narrow neck, that would be less important because um, no one's going to be able to see inside if, if I make a tall, narrow neck. But uh, it's still good to know that because this also helps uh, make sure that the joining is really well done. And it just, it's just nice. And if I have an open, more open neck, uh, then kind of an opening at the top that you can see into the pot, it's nice to have everything all clearly worked out. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. And what I'm going to do with this video is show you how to prepare this edge for the next coil after I'm done cleaning the inside here, which I'm just about done with. And then um, I'll show you, a, I'll, I'll work the piece up to whatever shape. I might make it a little more elongated or I could make it more spherical, but I will uh, work the piece up into, uh, till it's getting close to the shoulder. So I'll demonstrate a few more coils on here to show you how I would get it ready. And then we'll stop and I'll do a final video showing you how to um, close the shoulder and make the neck. So here we are and you can see if you look in now it's a very even smooth area and um, the the belly button visual is all gone. So now I'm going to grab a coil and start. Well no actually it is soft enough to coil right on but yours may not be. Um, so I'm going to show you how this is done. You can see there's this edge right here that is very, um, it is very, uh, when you flip yours over, it'll, it may be leather hard, but quite, it could be stiff. Can it, if it's too dry, you will not be able to join onto it without cracking. So that's really one of your important jobs is to keep an eye on this and make sure you pay attention. So it's stiff enough here, it's soft enough here to add to. And then what we're gonna do 
that we're going to score. And a good scoring tool is um, just a fork. I have some other scoring tools that I use, like little comb-like tools. Uh, there's a thing called an onion slicer. I use that quite a bit. Um, but this works great. And this is what scoring looks like. If you can see the edge there, it's really quite scored. And we score in three locations. We score at the very top edge. And then we score on the outside and the inside of this edge. We want to make sure that we're really getting a good bond when, with the new clay and the old clay. Um, and we wanted to think that it's always been together. So the outside scoring will look like this. And I'll go two directions to get a nice, nice scoring going on. And this piece that I'm working on here is this size because I started with a 12 inch bat. And I recommend you go 10 inches or smaller, even nine inches. And that will give you a size that will take a little less than one bag. This is going to take about a bag and a quarter because it's um, just a bigger scale, it's a bigger scale piece. So you can decide what you want to do with that, but I, I recommend keeping it a little bit smaller than it's better for demonstrations, especially when we get into texture to show you a little larger scale. Now here, I'm just going to do the, the inside as well. And we will go all the way around. Now you will have your um, materials and your tools coming up uh, at our pickup, which is uh, next Wednesday. Uh, so I'm doing this on uh, Saturday, the 21st. Our pickup will be Wednesday, the 26th. So now I'm just going to take this slip. So joining is really three steps. It's scoring and then then using lots of slip to make sure you fill up all that scoring. And then, and then it's pressing, putting some pressure as you join the clay. Those are the three steps. The way this works is when you score the surface, what you're doing is quadrupling or, or maybe even more a factor of 10 perhaps the, the surface area because instead of a flat flat area you now have all this uh, up and down ridges going on and so that really um, makes it uh, gives it a lot more surface area which gives it a lot more uh, uh, grip. The other thing that happens is when you paint it with slip the slip does two things. One is it fills all those gaps so that you're not going to get uh, air trapped, which is really important. You cannot have trapped air. The next thing that it does is it really softens the clay. So it makes it really encourage, it really encourages joining with your next coils. So that's what we'll do. Now, you may notice I do not coil with scoring and slipping in between. I know artists that do. I am not one of them. If your clay is sufficiently wet, then you need not do that. Then you can just, but you have to really make sure that your coil technique is um, sufficient, that you're really wiping the clay together and pressing the clay together. Otherwise, um, it may not join sufficiently and it could lead to cracking. So that's the, the idea with the with coil building. And I'll, I'll kind of review in this stage here the steps that we learned with the first demonstration. So now I've shown you that I have flipped the piece over because it, I made sure that it was stiff enough here. It's a little wet here. I'm a little nervous about that, but I think it'll be okay. I flipped the piece over and then I cut out the central uh, holding slab there, set it aside, um, covered it with plastic because you want to cover your clay that you're not using uh, so that it doesn't dry out unless you want it to. So that's that's an important part of it. 
They covered the slab over, got, got that aside, and now um, I'm gonna, um, I've scored and slipped, and now I'm ready to start building up my, uh, to continue going with my um, pot. So you'll see it kind of develop this way. And I guess you get a good look at my chin. That's pretty exciting. So here um, is the first coil. And you may require, maybe I'll get a little closer again because it's a little easier for you to see. So I'm going to bring this fabulous uh, recording process that I have here. Um, what I'm going to do first is just, you see, I lay the coil on there. And uh, I'm going to start wiping it with my... Uh, thumb as you've seen me do before. Remember it's a wiping in. The idea is you're pushing the clay down into the lower clay with the idea that you're convincing it that it's always been joined together. It's always been one piece of clay. That's what we're trying to convince it. And by the time we go through the three steps of the coiling process, it will be a believer. Now if you take a look here, you can see that my thumb marks are overlapping. So I'm only going half the width of my thumb. So I get a nice overlap and that will give me a much more even wall thickness as I do this. So I'm going around, I'm wiping and this is the first part of the first step of the of coil building, which as you remember is a three-step process. So there's the first coil going in. You can see we didn't get all the way around. So I'm going to take another coil. And in between, I want my coils to be covered up with plastic. So I don't want them drying out. Um, the, the coil is a, the clay is, has a lot of surface area for a small amount of clay when you make a coil. So it can be drying off very fast. So you want to keep it covered with clay. So remember, I'm joining it by overlapping. I'm not putting it right up against the previous coil. And that will make a much stronger joint there. So there we go again, going around and, and doing the, the coiling, the thumb stroke. And this will get us to our first coil. There we go. Just like that. And now, with my fingers, I'm going to go ahead and start working the joining. You can see here, it has that um, gap that we've talked about. And that's what you're, that's, that's guiding you. You wanna make sure you cover all that up. And then we get up to this place where the second coil was added. You wanna make sure to really push through so you don't trap any air. You push right through that that area and I'm adding a little extra clay for my fingers there. And then I'm going around again, overlapping all the way and pushing the coil um, right in. So making sure I get a good starting join as we join the new clay to the old clay. And here we go. going to go all the way around. And this is the first step, wiping with fingers and thumb inside and out. This should seem familiar from the first demo of the first part of the pot. Now, the next step is to take your rib and I'm going to start on the inside. And because we're doing all this joining, I'm going to push downward with the rib. I'm using the curved, the curved part of the rib because that fits really perfectly with the shape I'm trying to achieve with this pot. So the inside is curved, the outside I'll use the flat part of the rib. And you can notice that my outside hand is supporting, and I can even work here where you can see it, is supporting the shape of the pot. It's holding it at a slight angle inward and it's making sure that I'm not able to push the clay too far outward because that would that would lead to um, distortion and collapse. We don't want either of those. So now I'm going to um, move the rib in another direction. And I think we've talked a little bit about that. When you do these things, it's sometimes, it's, it's really, a, if you can, 
good to go in more than one direction when you're joining clay. Um, this makes for a much more even um, unblemished surface to move in, in two directions. Gotten around, and that takes oh, a little bit over here. Takes care of the first coil on the inside, so we're almost done with the second part of coil building, which is the rib work. And now I'm going and I'm smoothing out all my finger marks, and this is also stretching the clay, thinning the clay, and adding a little bit of strength from compression. Five, this, this rib is really just, it does five things at once. So I'll move this here more where you can see what's happening. See how I'm wiping out the finger marks all the way around. And you should be able to recognize when I've gotten to the place where I started, which is right about here. Now I have finished it and I can see you know, now when I do my next rib, it'll be a little harder to see. So I'm going to take a little clay and put it down here, right? See, I put a little, little piece of clay right there. That tells me I'm starting right here. So I can go around uh, 360 degrees and then stop. So here what I'm going to do is, again, moving the rib in the shape that I want. So I'm shaping as I go, but I'm also doing all the smoothing I need to do. And... I have that little indicator key down on the face of the bat to let me know when I've gone all the way around. I could probably see from the rib marks being in two different directions, but it's nice to have that reinforcement there. It's a trick that the Korean potters do when they coil build large kimchi jars. So there's the piece. Uh, I've got one coil on it. You can see it's growing just a little bit. And now the last step is the paddling. And I, I don't feel like I need to do too much. The clay is super soft right now. I have to be careful and just tap it. And that's just to help with shaping and compressing for strength. And it's our third step in quill building. Now, my plan is to make about three of these and show you uh, three different options for texture uh, that you can choose. You can choose a lot more. You can see them from looking at the, the visual images that I have of, um, of African pottery. So now I'm going to do another coil just to review one last time. And then I think I'm gonna turn the video off and uh, call that the end of this demonstration because our next, what I wanna do is build the pot up and that's really just more of the same, the three steps, the, the three steps of coil. Thumb and fingers, rib and paddle. And then thumb and fingers, rib and paddle. And that's what we do, we just go into, as, the, as we, it grows and you really want to keep an eye, eye on the shape of the pot as it develops. You're really making your form with each coil and with the paddle and the rib. So you keep an eye. I usually look right down the side of the silhouette as I'm spinning it around. It's good to have the pot right in the center of the bat, maybe even more so, and the bat centered right on your, your turntable and uh, that will work really well. Um, That'll give you um, the best chance of staying pretty symmetrical. You don't have to be rigidly, precisely symmetrical. Uh, what I'm really interested in um, is a sense of balance and symmetry on these pieces. I want that. Your requirement for this assignment is you have to build the sphere. You have to make the dome to start with, flip it over, and complement it, complete it with the top of the sphere, and then how you finish it with um, what size of opening, how, whether, whether you have a neck, whether you have a tall neck, whether you have a narrow neck, um, what kind of lip you have, whether you put handles on it, all of those are your choice. And then finally, um, whether you, how you do the surface, whether you um, do some applique or some, uh, some faceting, or um, some scraffito or Mishima. These are all techniques that we talk about. It's already in your um, class. Um, just in your, there's a whole description of textures. 
and I'm going to demonstrate those and put them in there as well. So that'll be all available for you. And I'm now in my rib section here. So that's that's how this will go. And going over the outside here. With the rib. So this is part two of the coiling. And we just, it's just fingers wiping and then rib wiping and then paddling and then back to fingers. Just add one coil after the next and the piece builds. One of the wonderful things about coil is there's almost no limit to size and shape of what you can accomplish. I have literally made nine foot tall and nine foot wide sculptures, but I have to do them in sections and you might guess why, because the only limitation on size is the size of your kiln. <clears throat> so you have to make sure you keep the sections to the size of your kiln, which I have been pretty good about throughout my years of making sculpture. Last year, I did something I had never expected. I had uh, just really surprised me. I got so carried away in a piece that I actually built it slightly larger than our bisque firing kiln could handle. I couldn't put it in the kiln. So what I did is very carefully loaded it into the wood kiln where it was eventually going to be fired anyway. And then it survived that way. It went through because the wood kiln was just slightly taller and I could get the piece in there. So now you can see we've made some progress up the sides of the piece and we'll continue to do that. And I will, uh, when I'm getting close to starting to bring it into a shoulder and a neck, I'll do a demonstration on that so that you can see how that goes. So we'll see you next demo.